Alright, so it built, completed successfully, the building of the OTA package. So this would be the package that you typically would flash using something like TeamWin Recovery Project or in recovery mode on the phone instead of having to use Fastboot and using um, that to flash system images and user data image and those sort of things. But there's something inherently wrong here with the build that we have. Notice all this built very well and, it, and that's very nice, but if we put this on the phone, it's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is because we looked and we found we didn't have the vendor files. Now typically this is something you take care of before you build and I missed it and didn't realize that it wasn't going to automatically download the vendor files for me and so uh, I have to do that myself. So the question is where do you get the vendor files? Well there's two main ways to do that device uh, for the device you're building Google and then you'll see Marlin and typically in here is a file um, that they don't include usually with like Google source code but if you're building for some other ROM um, for some other device typically like lineage and things like that the developers will include a setup uh, vendor setup, um, we're not vendor setup, that's, uh, that's a different kind of file. Vendor setup just adds the lunch combos. But a um, extract file that will allow you to extract the files that you need from the phone that you already have. Um, the other method is to add it to your local manifest so you can download it. So for instance, if we go here to the Muppets on GitHub, these guys are great, uh, always keeping on top of this sort of thing. And we are building for a Google device, so pri proprietary vendor Google. And we see um, the different uh, branches here. And you can see that they have a Lineage 16.0 branch. And in there is the Marlin files that you need. So there's several different ways to go from here. Uh, a really fast and easy way, if you don't plan on doing repo sync or something like that later, you can just take this clone download, download the zip, and go put it here where it needs to be. Make a folder called vendor, you know, like new folder, we'll call it vendor, and then we go in there and we can say new folder and we'll call it Google, right? And then we put this proprietary vendor Google folder stuff in there okay after we've downloaded it. So that's one method. Uh, the other method is to make a local manifest and have it downloaded every time that you synchronize your repository which is what I recommend because then you'll always have up-to-date material. So how do we do that? We've covered this before in other videos but I think this is really important so we're gonna go over it again. So if we view, let's see, what is it, view, edit, edit, preferences, and I want to show hidden and backup files. So we say OK. You can also hit Control H and it will show you. We see down here at the bottom we have an extra folder called dot repo. This is hidden from you normally. You can't see it because it has a dot in front. So we open that up and inside you have a manifest and it has a default that tells it to um, go and get all of these projects. You're not supposed to edit this default itself because then when you do repo sync it'll say your default doesn't match the actual default and it won't let you uh, finish synchronizing unless you do some fancy trickery. But another object or option that you have is you can do a local manifest which I think Let's see, do I have some saved over here? Well, for instance, you might say, well, how do I write this manifest from scratch? So you can just jump over to Alaska Linux user, and you'll find a user, Alaska Linux user, that's me, and you can go to repositories, 
Now I've actually moved over to GitLab, but you can still look on, on GitHub if you're looking for my stuff here. So let's just type local mm, manifest. Maybe I don't have it on here anymore. Mm, pretty sure I did. Okay, well I must have taken it off of here, so head on over to GitLab and you can grab it from there. So GitLab dot com you can go to Alaska Lynx user gitlab dot com Alaska Lynx user and you can look at personal projects and if you just search through here you will find make sure I didn't miss it here nope, not on the first page Local manifest. Here you go. And this would give you something to work with. And you could you could find one anywhere really. So what you do is you download this. <coughs> Let's see, we'll download that as a zip. We'll save that file. And, you know, like just if you forget how to do this, you can just look it up, manifest, local manifest, you know, using a local manifest.xml with repo, you know, and somebody else was already asking this question, you know, where do you put it, that sort of thing. So if you, if you open this up, you know, you can see your local manifest to dot repo manifest, right? Pretty simple, but we see that we're going to put it in here in the manifest and our download file, where's our local manifest, we're going to extract here. We just have this room service.xml. Um, you could rename it, you know, like F2, you could be like local, you know, manifest or whatever you wanted to call it. We'll just copy that. We're going to put it in here, paste. We're going to F2, oh, not F2. We're going to open it with gedit. And this one is uh, grabbing some things from GitHub for uh, AOKP. But in this case, we wouldn't want to use AOKP. We wouldn't want to use that that way at all. The big thing to make sure that you have is if you look under gedit, is what references you have. Remote name AOSP fetch from here. Well, so if we say we want to fetch from GitHub, it's not going to know where GitHub is to be able to fetch from it. So you'd have to add another remote in here to say a remote for um, GitHub uh, and point it to HTTPS and all of that, which is fine. You know, and then you just change this portion to be GitHub the Muppets, proprietary vendor Google, uh, and path vendor Google, and then, and then you'll be good to go. Like here's the vendor one right here. We'll delete all of this stuff right in here. So it would look like this one, except instead of Suicide Squirrel, proprietor vendor LGE, it would be you know, the Muppets, proprietary vendor Google, going to vendor Google. And the revision branch that you want, in our case, would be the 16.0 um, branch. So that's how you would add those vendor files, and then you could actually um, put those into your build. So then you would actually have to, of course, you know, make your... Um, make your package again to include those into the build. So just wanted to touch on that because it wasn't there when we built this originally. I want to make sure that we went back to it. So be aware of that and uh, hopefully this was helpful and informative and uh, hopefully we see you out there building um, Android 
devices soon. Uh, once again, I do want to stress this is basics. This is just how to build something that's already there. If you want to learn how to build something that hasn't been built before for that device, like you want to upgrade from Oreo to Pi on your device, that's different than what we're doing here. Um, I do have an advanced video series uh, or intermediate to advanced video series where I've uh, built a device from scratch and I'm hoping to do a series on upgrading from one version of Android to another and I'm, I'm actually already working on it but it's going to take a while to complete so uh, be sure to check those out uh, if you get the chance or when they're completed uh, check out some of my other uh, videos there to see about doing more advanced tasks and uh, Hopefully we see you uh, around the uh, XDA community or uh, Android uh, building community um, putting out some uh, great material.